We're going to the Ord-Oracle.com. And this is written by Tim Ord, again, of the Ord Oracle. And Tim comes on the Tom O'Brien Show every Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, we greatly appreciate his insights. And no doubt, there are a bunch of things going on today. And we can't wait to hear what he has to say. Tim, how are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me on again. So, Absolutely. Uh, we can just crack right in, huh? All right. Let's do it. Let's, uh, let's take a, we'll start from the big picture and look backwards mm. to the smaller picture. And so chart one is uh, the summation index. This is McCollin's summation index. Uh, they have a McCollin summation index, which is measures a bigger trend. Then they have McCollin Oscillator, which measures a little bit uh, shorter term trend. Then actually, I have a, or I don't have, but the Zweig breast thrust indicator is even, even in, in a smaller trend. But you know, let's look at the summation index, which is the top window on chart one here. And back in, I think it was, well, here it is. Uh, we got a, for a bullish, this is intermittent term signals. This is like a year or longer a lot of times, sometimes a little bit shorter. But normally, when these signals triggered, they mean, usually out for uh, at least 12 months, sometimes even a couple of years. But back in October 27th, uh, for this to trigger, you need a reading below 700, minus 700. And that happened on October 27th. Then within two months, you need a rally back to plus 1,000. And that happened December 27th. So that opened the door for 2024. High probability this will be an up year. And so far, that's what's occurring. Uh, so anyhow, all those red or all those blue lines across the chart. This chart goes back to 2007. Are the times when the summation index hit below minus 700, and the red lines are the times when it hit plus 1,000 in a two-month period. And if you look at the bottom window there, you know they all came at lows. So what it did, it, you need a sign of weakness to get a bottom. You need panic. That's a sign of weakness. Then to, to get a buy signal, you need a sign of strength. And that if you don't get the sign of strength, you're going to have a more um, selling climaxes until you finally do get a sign of strength. But we did have a sign of strength coming out of this uh, low of uh, last October, and that sign of strength came on December 27th. So that's a bullish intermediate term. So let's go to chart two. We are pulling that up and, right uh, now. We've got it. All right, chart two, the top window is the McCollin, uh, the, uh, McCollin oscillator. And this kind of measures the, you know, three, four, five months time frames. It can, get, it can go longer, very seldom shorter. But uh, same thing happens here. The red lines are the times when McCollin oscillator hits below minus 300, which we did on April 16th. Uh, to get the bullish signal, you need a, a rally to plus, one, to plus 300, uh, within a month, so it would be May 16th. And right now, yesterday's close came in at 184, so we're about 100, and, you know, less, less than 120 points away from 300 uh, to get that signal. If we get that signal, that would probably, you know, for the next, I don't know, three, four, five months, we'd that would project a rally, possibly even to year end. But uh, yesterday we closed right around at 185, and we got till May uh, 16th, which is another, well, about 10 trading days. Well, it's, it's about a week away as 16th comes on next uh, Thursday. So we got rest this week and, uh, you know, four days next week. So we got, uh, what, seven trading days to go. Will that be hit? You know, I think there's a real good chance it probably will. Um, not every day is going to be an up day, but we're kind of into a gap area right now. We'll look at that a little bit later, but it shows promise, but if we do get to plus 300, which it probably I think we will, uh, then uh, that's, you should stay long. Uh, there's no reason to be short, even though you may have a week or so down. That April decline that we had did produce a selling climax on April 16th. So the washout low is in. So now we got to see how strong this rally will go. Uh, so uh, it's not an ideal so if you're thinking about shorts, this is probably not a good time. I'll mm -hmm. put it that way. So in general, we think we're probably going to move higher. So let's look at even the shorter-term time frame. 
So the long-term time frame's in because the summation index is bullish signal back in uh, December two, uh, of 2023. The uh, McCollum Oscar, which is a little bit shorter time frame, is a multi-month type signal. It hasn't hit it yet, but it's still got a you know seven trading days to go to hit it, which is a good chance we can do it. And now we can go to Zwag Breath Thrust Indicator. Now this indicator is is it's probably a, you know, a couple of month indicator, you know, sometimes a little, a little less, but it kind of picks out the short term lows. And uh, on on uh, I think it was April sixteenth, we hit below minus point four on this. Uh, to describe this uh, Zwag breast thrust indicator, um, it's advanced. Uh, it's a NYSE advanced divided by. Uh, NYSE total, and you take a 10-day average of that. So you need a reading, to get the selling climax, you need a reading below 0.4, which happened on April 16th, and you need a rally uh, to within 10 days or less to hit 0.6. Well, we did hit 0.6 yesterday, but it's 12 days. So did that meet the parameters? Not quite. But it's not bearish. It's just not quite as bullish. And said it had taken 10 days. It took us 12 days to get there. Still, you know, worth. It's not. It, it doesn't mean like the surge. Last time we got this signal came in October, right at the bottom, and you can see on that chart uh, in the middle there that marked the bottom, and the market just pretty much skyrocketed all the way up until first part of April. So even though we're getting a sign of strength here, not as strong as we'd like to see if it was 10 days, but still decent. So the rally will probably continue here. That's the reason why I'm thinking that some H, or the uh, McCall and Oscar may get to plus 300 by next Thursday uh, because this is not, it's, there's nothing weakness in here. It's just not as strong as the last signal. Right. So anyhow, it, it looks, uh, looks bullish. So it's good. Okay, here's the music. Yeah. So, oh. Tim, stay right there. We'll, we'll be right back. Folks, we'll be right back with Tim Ward of the... Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Ryan. We are currently with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That is Ord-Oracle.com. Tim, before we went to break, we were talking about the Zwag Breath uh, indicator on the SPX. Right. Uh, one thing I want to really say about it, to, to get that... Um, for that indicator to trigger, I guess you might say, you need a reading uh, below 0.4. Then within 10 days, you need a reading of 10 trading days. You need a reading of 0.6. And this last go around, it took 12 days. It uh, did reach the parameters, but it took too long. So it's still a bullish signal, but not as bullish as you like to see anything. You know, the last time we got that signal, it took five days back in the October low. I don't know if you can see it on that chart there, mm -hmm. that signal was triggered in five days, and the market just kind of rocketed up. This time around, it took 12 days. So the rally is still intact, but probably is not going to be as strong as it was coming off the October low. Uh, so that's still bullish, still up, but, you know. That's it's a bit more forward. tamed. Yeah. All right, four. Uh, I got a pink area, the top charts, the SPY, and I got a pink area in there, and I got a bunch of numbers right that says where the trend is and where the trend closed, and all those readings were above 1.2. What that trend reading suggests in that area, normally when you start seeing panic in a certain area, it continues to see panic, and, they, and that's the reason why you know this market's forming a bottom. If those trend readings didn't get above 1.2 on that decline, the market would still be going down. But we did get trend readings uh, between actually 500 to basically 512 on the SPY. So that's a whole area support area. So we went down. You had panic. Uh, we're trying to get a sign of strength going to the upside. And the McCall and Oscar is on track to do that. We're not to plus 300 yet, but we haven't reached the, the time, uh, time ending, which is next Thursday. So I think there's a good chance we, we can get there by next Thursday, but right now I got a blue area on that chart. We're running into that blue area. That blue area is, is a gap. And normally when you test a gap on lighter volume, which is actually what we're doing right now, is usually a resistance zone. Uh, but what's curious here, uh, if you look at the bottom window, normally you go into a resistance area 
the volume drops off and the VIX goes up. Here the volume's dropping off, but the VIX is actually still going down. Uh, so this gap may not be a resistance, is my point. I thought we'd stop in here, consolidate a little bit uh, before we head higher. But since the VIX is actually making a new lower low today, it's kind of hard to see on this chart. But it is touching a lower low as the S&P is making a higher high, even though it's on lighter volume, you know, so you get yeah, it's not real bearish. Uh, and if we do even have a bearish situation, it's just probably a, you know, a minor pullback because we already made the low. Uh, we already seen the panic. The panic's done. And so all we need is, is kind of sometimes I guess there's lacking of buying pressure. I think, you know, so the uptrend's intact. What suggests is maybe it's not as strong as, uh, you know, I'd like to have it, but you can't get everything you wish in the stock market. But uh, it's not real bearish here. Uh, so I'm thinking, you know, if we're going to see a pullback, it's probably going to be minor because the VIX is not showing bearish signs in here, even though the volume is. So it's... Uh, if at best, you know, at worst, I think, it's probably just a mild consolidation. So bigger trends up, I just stay long. I don't see any top of any consequence forming here. So um, I think May will be up along with June. I think July could probably have some trouble, but we'll look at it then. So anyhow, remain bullish. There's there's no top of any consequence here mm-hmm. from what I can see. So... Let's take a chart. Let's take a chart. Uh, flip to chart five. Yep. So we're looking at the GDX here, or at yeah, least something with yeah, gold. Yeah. This is the. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is the monthly chart. It goes way back, and I kind of looked uh, some studies here. This is could develop into something really, which I'm thinking is something big in the gold market is happening right now. And this chart uh, doesn't. Anyhow, the the top chart is a bullish percent index for the gold miners index slash GDX. It's the ratio. So only, only times I do ratios, because sometimes these ratios show out, show things on the chart that, that GDX doesn't show or that bullish percent index for the gold miners doesn't show. But once you put that ratio in there, things kind of pop out. And this ratio is a monthly ratio going back to... Uh, you know, 2006 or something, or 2007. But what I notice, when the ratio is above 0.25 and stays above 0.25, you get these big rallies that, like, start in 2016, which is kind of middle of the chart. That's where that light blue going horizontal. And 2019, that uh, that ratio got above 0.25 and stayed above 2.5. Right now, we're 0.231. We're above uh, point two, uh, two point two five. My point is, if we stay above uh, point or uh, two point two five, this uh, will predict that you'll have these strong rallies that happened like two thousand sixteen. You got a lot of stocks. Two thousand sixteen went from ten times. You went from a dime to a dollar. You know, dollar to ten dollars. And same thing happened in two thousand nineteen. You had a lot of ten timers that. Um, gold stocks went through. And I'm thinking this chart is setting up to do something similar to that. This is very seldom you get above 0.25. We've been above 2.5 for the last couple, three months now, and we appear to be holding above uh, 0.25. So let's look at the shorter term, which is next chart. Yep, give me one second to get that up for you. Perfect. All right, the bottom window is the uh, ma- this chart just measures the internal strength of the components of GDX. So when this chart bottom window is the uh, 50-day average of the up-down volume of advanced client indicators, when this chart's above zero, you, you got an uptrend going. And normally, the uptrend ends when you break below zero. But, you know, I got back in 2019, if you look back there, uh, you can see it stayed above zero in general for 16 months, and he, that happened again. And uh, actually, in 2022, he stayed above zero for about six months. We've been above zero for I don't know last uh, well at least a month now. Well, it stay above. You know, right now there's this thing's not weakening; it's not pulling back at all. And even though the market's gone sideways, 
uh, if you look on the top one of those GDX gone sideways here for a month, this indicator is not weakening at all. It's staying uh, relatively high up around plus 10, plus 15 area. And so they're buying uh, the up-down volume suggests that there's more volume going to the going uh, compared to the down volume. So it's to me, that's buying pressure going into this talk. And I think this is a neckline of a head and shoulders bottom on GDX. We're at the neckline right now. So I'm thinking we're eating through the supply because the up-down volume 50-day average is staying strong. So we're probably going to actually see a sign of strength here pretty quick. So if we do, that kind of puts in favor of of, of, uh, the previous chart we were looking at. So there's some... Man, I hear the music again. Yeah, and, and Tim, you know, we have a short segment on for the next, but I know you got something with silver going on as well. I would love to hear your uh, input on that, and I know our viewers would as well. So, All right. Yeah. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be okay. right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle to wrap up the show. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, Tim, I know we have a short segment here, but I know you got some charts on silver as well, and I'm kind of curious to right. hear your input on that. Actually, one of your listeners uh, emailed me and says, do you have any stocks that are starting to pop out? And I can get into all the technical stuff, but the easiest way to look at stocks, momentum rules all the indicators. If it's up in an uptrend, it it's, doesn't matter what, you know, the stocks are overbought or whatever. But I just put two, uh, this is a monthly chart, uh, this is chart seven, the monthly chart of Discovery Silver Corp. Anyhow, in a nutshell, this is a, I put a monthly Bollinger Band on this, and when it's above the mid-Bollinger Band, it's on a buy signal. When it's below the mid-Bollinger Band, it's on a sell signal. And when it gets above 100% above the upper Bollinger Band, it's a sell signal. So that's the reason I point that out. So right now, we're just entering into the mid-Bollinger Band on this. We might be up at, or right at it or whatever. But if you notice, the volume did jump up on this. So this is probably going to flip to a buy signal if it hasn't already. So this is a silver stock. And now we got, we got one more right after it. And this is uh, uh, Rio 2, whatever. Same thing happens if you're above the mid Bollinger Bands, a buy signal. If you get 100% above the upper Bollinger Bands, a sell signal. And uh, anyhow, you flip to a buy signal here, it looks like about December of 2023. And the volume jumped up. So this is on a monthly buy signal. And as long as it stays above the mid-Bollinger band, it's on a buy signal. So uh, these two silver stocks are uh, look promising. So, But if they close below uh, the mid-Bollinger band, you have to sell it. So it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a fail-safe, um, high-probability trade because you're looking at a monthly chart. It's meant to catch the trend. And so uh, I think silver... These two silver stocks could perform very well going forward. Well, Tim, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, again, you're on every Tuesday and Thursday. You can, they can find you at ord-oracle.com. Uh, Tim, we always appreciate you coming on. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Great. Thank you. Absolutely. And folks, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow um, for usual programming. Hope you have a great rest of your day.